On with me now, I have James Ihedibo. He is a UMass alum, but he also played for about a decade in the NFL. Uh, he was a Super Bowl champion with the Ravens, but today he is here to talk about the matchup of the weekend, which is UMass versus A&M. James, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks so much for coming on. Now, in the beginning of the season, I don't think anybody really expected this A&M UMass game to be something big to talk about, but here we are now. I think the playing field has evened out quite a bit. Before the season started, did you ever think that this was going to be anywhere near a fair fight? Um, no, and anytime you're talking about SEC football and you're talking about a premier uh, university and program uh, such as Texas A&M, um, you know, I have to say I did circle it on the calendar living in Houston, you know, right down the road, looking forward to, you know, attending the game, um, but didn't think it would be a matchup at all. I mean, just, you know, such a supreme um, recruiting class and, and, and group of men um, and UMass still, you know, building. Didn't think it would be a matchup, but, you know, we might be in for something on Saturday. Yeah, so head coach Don Brown, he actually was the head coach for about half of your career when you were there. He left for a little while, but now he is back. So is there anything that you can tell me about his coaching style and the way that he runs this game? Yeah, no, you know, Coach Brown, um, you know, his uh, resume speaks for itself in, in, in college football. Um, he's had, you know, his fingerprint of success you know, from, um, you know, Michigan's defense, you know, when they're top, you know, five and, and number one in the country for a certain, certain period of time, defensive-wise, scoring defense-wise, Boston College. I mean, the list goes on, even as time at UMass. So for him to come back and it, it kind of be full circle, um, him back at UMass, uh, he, he definitely brings that aggressive, um, you know, style of defense, um, you know, a scrappy mentality and, uh, and, and really, you know, a, a, a design of pressuring the quarterback and making the quarterback make post snaps, snap reads. So the scrappy defense you're talking about, we we know that A&M's offense has been struggling this year. So how do you see the Minutemen defense matching up with this Aggie offense? Well, I, I think first and foremost, it's going to have to be stopping the run. Um, I think, you know, A&M, their ability to run the ball and and this is a game for them. Uh, where they can get back to the identity of winning at the line of scrimmage um, and utilizing uh, that that offensive line uh, to create a new line of scrimmage. And I know Jimbo's going to have these guys ready. We're not they're not going to go in with the mentality that we can afford to lose this one um, at home. Um, and, and I know Jimbo's going to have those guys fired up and ready to go. Yeah, I do not think the Aggies can afford to not be prepared for this game. So what have you seen out of UMass so far this season that you think they really need to work on before heading to Kyle Field? Um, the Just their ability to execute in, in key situations. I think situational awareness. And, you know, this is a young UMass roster. Um, you know, you have guys that are freshmen and sophomores truly, you know, getting their feet wet and, and, and playing real minutes. Um, and so it's learning on the run for them. And so their ability to uh, uh, execute in, in key situations, whether it's third down, whether it's two minute drill, whether it's end to half, um, th those situations uh, will, will be key for them in their, in their overall success. All right, well, the Minutemen are currently on a seven game losing streak, but hey, the Aggies are on a six game losing streak, so anything could happen. What would this win mean for the UMass program? Um, I think it would be um, an, an amazing. I think it would be um, a pillar uh, for them to build on for future for success and and most importantly recruiting. Um, I think that that would be you know key. I think um, a lot has to happen for them uh, to win in Aggie Land playing on on the road. So um, you know, although I wish them them luck and I'm rooting for them, um, you know, I do have to bet on a and <laughs> in their preparation in this game because I just. I cannot see uh, the Aggies letting this one fall through the cracks. All right, James, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Give me a score prediction. Oh, final score prediction. Um, I'm going to say 63-17 Aggies. That's wow. going to be my prediction for 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 Saturday. We'll we'll see. I okay. mean, we'll see. We will see. But I I just I think. Um, SEC football, uh, you know, in all my years of playing, it's always known as the the baby NFL. It's almost like the D League, and so uh, their ability to even perform and, and their losses, you know, respective to UMass losses, are are 
are different graded talent. So um, I think this is kind of a game for them to help get them back on track and get in the winning column and then finish the season strong. We will see. I think the Aggies could definitely use a score like that. Well, thank you so much for sitting down and talking a little bit about this. This has been James Eheribo talking about UMass versus A&M this weekend.